Hello, I'm Liv, and I'm going to be telling you a bit about art backgrounds. Now, I don't know everything about this. That would take longer than a homeschool deep dive permit, so I'm just going to do the basic idea. Art backgrounds are somewhat self-explanatory. In simple terms, it's the background of an art project. But mom would kill me if I said that and didn't explain further, so here we go. Take a look at these four different examples. They are all examples of art backgrounds, minus the characters, obviously. They're different, though, because of the tone of the story the artist wants the reader to feel. More simplicity gives you a comedic effect or less serious tone, and the more detail you add, the more serious the scene is. There are some exceptions, though, where the background is simple and the characters have more detail, and it's still pretty serious. The color scheme also helps decide what emotions are shown and felt and the wide shot of each picture lets the reader see the full story. However, I kept my main focus on perspectives, which help figure out the horizon line and what things would look like if they were from the camera perspective in the surroundings. I did this because I always seem to have trouble drawing out a scene in the background, I always tend to focus on characters, and if I did do a background, it wouldn't be planned out and there'd be a whole lot of confusion. First point perspective starts with one point where you put a horizon line and a whole bunch of lines coming out of it. Every vertical line you make is always straight up and down and the horizontal lines follow the many spread out lines coming from that one point. This is the easiest perspective to draw out and creating comics with this would work well depending on what panel you're creating if you want one main focus. For this drawing, I made a very plain road surrounded by buildings and it worked around with different things like doors and lettering. Any space in the horizon line that isn't blocked by walls, you put in the horizon line, or else they'll all float in space, and that's never good unless you're making something out of space. Second point perspective is like a double of the first point perspective. You have two points on a single horizon line, and it gives you a wider range of space for your drawings. You can make more corners and give things more depth than realism. This is slightly harder than the first point perspective, but I like how it looks more than the first point perspective in some ways. I did a lot more drawings in two point perspective, trying to fill in an area with as much depth as I could because I didn't just want one row of buildings, but more of an entire city. I tried making random blocks scattered about, and for fun, I tried making all the vertical lines slanted to see what that would do. It ended up being pretty interesting. The third point was the strangest and hardest to figure out. Sure, this picture looks simple enough, but the drawing guide I used? Trippy, and I couldn't even figure out how to use it after three or four attempts. Eventually I found out somehow where the lines are supposed to go, but I, I, it, it was difficult. For the drawing, I made three skyscrapers that were ruled by the grumpy doggo Coco. The center skyscraper was easy enough, but the other two I confused myself a lot with, wondering how the vertical lines are supposed to go, and how the top kind of kept sliding in between the first skyscraper. I don't know if I did it right, but I suppose this is the best I'm going to get with that perspective. That was hard to do. In the future, I would want to finish a perspective drawing instead of just having sketches and figure out how to make them into some kind of story, whether it be comic, animation, or just in my head. Maybe I'll figure out nature too and create different settings and learn how to make realistic looking houses or castles. Who knows though? Only the time travelers.